Hey, good evening. I got two of these drill masters, so I have two of the batteries. Uh, this battery seems to be okay. This one I've left on charge too long, and it doesn't work real good anymore. So I want to see about upgrading it to nickel metal, which is marginally better than NICADs. I'll also convert another one to lithium ion, and we'll see how they do. So here's the inside of the battery. This is the physical clip. This is the interface to the drill. And here is the battery pack. As you can see, it's really just a collection of cells. Basic battery has 1.2 volt potential. And you can see they've just wired these all together to get 18. So I've got 15, that gets me to 18. So let's look at my options. I bought a pack of these nickel metal. They're actually fairly cheap. I ended up paying about 68 cents a piece for them. So that's the size of the cell. Now I still need 15 of them. And these are taller, so these aren't going to go down in this and be a one-for-one -one swap out. And I think what I'm going to do is actually try to peel those off. I think they'll peel off with a pair of pliers. There you go. They will. Now, what's fused in there won't. Let's go ahead and take these apart. Okay, there we go. Now that contact is a little rusted. Now there is the key of this. The battery is made to connect one way. So these two slide into these slots, and that makes it work. And this is meant to keep other batteries from clipping in that might be the same. So it's possible I can adapt the 18 volt warrior to this. That's one of my upcoming projects. I have to figure out how to get 15 of these into this. So let's go and see what we got. Okay, so there's 15. Works out okay. There's eight on the bottom, seven on the top. Plenty of extra room. I think what I'm going to do is go through and solder pairs. I'm just going to solder across the top of this, put it down, get another. Once I have these soldered, then I can start stringing them together. Stringing them together is going to be a little bit harder uh, in terms of propping them up. I'll just do four more. I want to do them anyway. I want to offset them. Okay, so I'm just going to go right down on that. Mm. So now that I have that, I can turn this around, hold those down, and let's see about me getting this one done. Start doing this. I should have enough of these tabs to reuse. I'll have to get me some of this very, very fine, almost foil. I have some ideas for this, but I haven't tested them yet. There we go. I want to cut off this end because it's got torn up a tad shorter. There we go. And I'll cut that in two. Moving right along here. See if we can get this tin. I tend to put too much on this. Now these you want to move fast. As you can see, those are good. Well, this is a little harder. It's a bigger surface, and I don't want to cover the whole surface. Just want to dab right in the center if possible. Some of the problem is just holding it steady when your hands aren't steady. This is a lot of, this is an experiment for me. If it works, I'll see about getting some of this foil to make it easier. So I'll pre-melt that just to make it easier. It's actually working okay. You don't want to overheat the batteries. 
heat is death to a nickel metal battery. So. Remember, you got to be careful and not bridge anything. See the color change on that to know when it's actually okay. So let's test and see what we got. This is a great multimeter, except for one thing: it has a it, it has an idle timeout. The idle timeout is absolute from the time you turn it on not in activity. So I've got 5 volts. So I'm up to 10. So let's do 4 more. Be able to test this and get 5 volts. 5 volts. So there's 15 volts. And as you make these little sub assemblies, you should be checking the voltage. 3.75. So I've got 3.25, I got 1.25 three times, so 3.75. These packs I made up should be five. There we go. So I've got 5, 10, 15, and 3 is 18.75. So that's what the other one had. That's what this one has. So I need to solder these together. And I've got positive and negative. That's good. Positive and negative. So what I can do is go here bridge here, come back, and bridge here. Then I've got this. It's kind of an oddity. So the wiring here becomes a little difficult. I'm going to wrap tape around these to create a more stable battery pack. Now, there are better ways than black tape, but it does work. If you're wondering why I want this configuration, determined that this doesn't work, it's too tall, but this works just fine. So I'm going to save this one, go here, 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 and then my connection points there and there. So let's do that. I'll do them in order to keep from getting confused. came across here, so I'm going to come down here and do here, then here, and then I have two connection points. Very important you keep polarity right all the way through here. And once again, I'll try these. Okay, so this is actually working out very good because here's my starting point. I've come down and around. I'm going to do these two. It's ended up this way almost accidentally. So, if I look at this, it actually turned out really good. The opposite corners are going to hook up and that'll work really well with these wires. So let's see what our battery pack has. So I'll touch here and here. 18.82. Excellent. Uh, that's what the old one had to have. It's advertised as an 18 volt drill, but with 1.2 batteries, you end up with 8.75, 8.82. They're obviously a little over their nominal value. So I can put it in here like this. Now, 
the height is a little over the top but that's actually good because I need something to set this spring on for the release so that works good here's my connection points positive goes here negative goes here so that actually works out okay so let's go ahead and solder them up now this one had a clip on it and I actually took it off it was more awkward than anything else so good mechanical connection you gotta be careful not short this thing out either so it's going to lay on its side like this so I'll take this and this little these clips are too big but I went ahead and kept this one okay so it's got one of these in the bottom I'm going to put one on the top and that's like this and that kind of gets in the way and makes it a little awkward to put together so there's how it goes I'm going to put this back in the right place I want to maintain the same functionality I have now. Oops, I want to put this in. There, that looks pretty good. So I'll put these screws in. So, completed battery. Let's see what our final voltage is. Now, this is how the battery fits on the drill. There's two slots here, and that has the contacts. So I've got 18.84. I think that's pretty good. These batteries are nickel metal. They're 1.2 voltage. I can use the same battery charger that I did for the NICADs, but I've got to use the same common sense in that the NICADs, if you charge them too long, it actually ruins the battery because of a chemical buildup on the terminals inside the batteries. With nickel metal, if you leave it on too long, they overheat and when they overheat they lose effectiveness so you want to be careful six hours is probably the most you want to leave these hooked up so fits good literally the same results now they look exactly alike this one is lighter and that's how I'll know um, a lot lighter maybe a fourth of the weight so there we go that's how you replace the batteries now this was upgrading to nickel metal because I can use the same charger and they're relatively inexpensive they're not that much more expensive than NICADs and I think they work better. You still have to pay attention and manage them effectively. Now, this one actually is okay, but I have some lithium ion batteries I'm gonna replace this one with. And we'll see how that goes. And believe it or not, the manufacturer wants you to do this because they put screws in the bottom. Now this is rated at 1.3 uh, amp hours. These are rated at three amp hours. So I should get better longevity out of this. That remains to be seen. As long as they're at least as good as the NICADs were, I'm okay with that. So how much did it cost? So to, to do this, I used 15 of these. Now this is a pack of 24, so there's not many left over when I'm done. But it works out to about $9 to upgrade these to nickel metal. Now, I had to have a battery anyway, because this one didn't last very long. I can get those at Harbor Freight for about 20 bucks for NICADs. Well, kind of burned out on NICADs. I wanted to go to nickel metal, so here we go. Okay, so if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.